today uh, we'll speak about the scope management knowledge area this is the second knowledge area as per the pm bok so in scope management we have total of six processes so there is no process in the initiating process group but starting from planning we have the plan scope management then we have collect requirement then we have define scope and create work breakdown structure in control monitor and control knowledge area we have validate scope and control scope now if you see closely that uh, first process in uh, planning process the plan scope management the purpose of this plan scope management is that will give you a plan which to execute all other processes in the scope management process scope management knowledge area so uh, look at that inputs here for the plan scope management we have the project management plan this scope management plan actually going to be a uh, subsidiary plan for your main project management plan so and this is related to all other processes uh, plan so uh, your project management plan will be an input to it so that you can update that uh, plan the next one is the project charter you will have some kind of definitions on uh, project or a very high level requirement on the project charter so this is one of the uh, inputs we needed for uh, preparing the plan scope management then enterprise environmental factor and organizational process asset we know uh, what all these are enterprise environmental factors are the factors that your organization uh, uh, operates in so uh, it might be a matrix organizations or it can be external environment where there could be some government rules and regulations so all this comes under enterprise environmental factor and organizational process asset are those process the assets that uh, you created for uh, the knowledge learned from or the lesson learned from other projects so now uh, by doing uh, these two tools and techniques like expert judgment and the meeting so this is very easy so expert judgment will expert will uh, work on that who has a previous experience and we can have a uh, multiple meetings and uh, we'll get the final output there are two different uh, uh, output for the scope management plan usually we see uh, we see um, any uh, uh, plan any process which is a plan scope management or plan, uh, plan schedule management we will see at least one project management plan so plan scope management has a uh, scope management plan but this also has an additional plan that is a requirement management plan so uh, what is the requirement management plan that will give you how to collect the requirements from the stakeholders and the very next process is the collect requirement that is also in the planning process group so here also the inputs are project charter stakeholder register scope management plan and uh, you know why the stakeholder uh, register is here because we that will give you the list of stakeholder who is uh, responsible for giving you the requirements the scope management plan the requirement management plan will uh, this will help you to actually uh, execute as per the plan and the stakeholder management plan will also come in picture because you are actually dealing with the stakeholders so here the tools and techniques are interviews you will just go and uh, talk to the you know, stakeholders you have a, you can have a focus group who will just particularly work on a particular requirement based on the, in a group then you can have a facilitated uh, workshop you have a group creativity techniques group decision making techniques and then uh, questionnaires or survey you can distribute the questionnaires or survey among the stakeholders and they will based on their answers you can just uh, collect your requirement you can uh, collect the requirement by observations like what uh, uh, the other customers wants from you they, you can just observe them and then you can just uh, try to understand their requirement you can create a prototype that will uh, uh, kind of use as a benchmark and you can always compare uh, what you uh, what you need uh, with respect to the prototype so it will give you a kind of baseline of your project 
and you can modify uh, above it. So it, it, it is a very good tool on collecting the requirements. So now benchmarking is a uh, industry standard kind of thing. So you can always uh, benchmark your requirements so that at least these particular requirements are met as per the industry standard. And you have a context diagram. This is kind of use, use case diagram. So uh, uh, by the context diagram, you also can just find out different activities happening. I mean, that needs to be happen. And last one is the document analysis. So you can have a multiple requirement documents. You can analyze and then find out the actual requirement documents. So the outputs of this process is requirement document that uh, will contain ev everything that you captured by these tools and techniques. And we'll also have a requirement traceability matrix. So this matrix actually uh, give you the requirement ID and uh, all, all other details of your uh, requirement, the requirement descriptions and uh, and different uh, like work breakdown structure ID and all, all all the details will be here in the requirement traceability matrix. So that by looking at the traceability matrix, you can just find out all the re relevant details of the project. This is a kind of mapping with a different uh, uh, point of your projects. So now. Uh, the third one is the defined scope. So you, this is the actual point. You are actually defining the scope of, for your project. So uh, input to this process is uh, project charter again. Then recommend documentations. Definitely recommend documents come in picture because you will know that what is in uh, scope and or out of scope from the recommend documentations. Then the similar organization process asset is here because you will you might need to know or refer the previous project data. Uh, so that you can easily find out if there is any error uh, happening uh, while collecting the requirement or just defining the scope. You can refer this document. And scope management plan is also required to execute this process. So now expert judgment, product analysis, facilitated workshop, alternative generation, those are the different tools and techniques and by which you can actually uh, get your project scope statement. So project scope statement will give you the exactly what you need to uh, do in your project and then your project documents gets updated because you already created the project scope statement so you will create multiple documents uh, for that as well so your documents uh, will get updated now uh, the fourth one is a create work breakdown structure so this is very important in the scope management plan because right till now you have just defined the scope for your project now th there might be a for a big project there might be a first scope of that so you need to uh, break it down to a uh, uh, reasonable level so that people can looking at it people can just easily understand what they need to do so work breakdown structure will have the input as a project scope statement then you have recommend documentations then organizational process asset scope management plan enterprise environmental factor so you all know that uh, wh why these are here so uh, project scope statement uh, just notice here is the main important one here uh, this is uh, just you created in the defined scope so this is the uh, one you are going to break it down to further uh, uh, detail. So decomposition is one of the main technique here. You will just uh, decompose the uh, big chunk of work in a smaller uh, segments. So an expert judgment also helps you to identify how much and what level you need to and uh, what is the criteria to break it down. So scope baseline is uh, is your output. So scope baseline actually contains your scope statement, the work breakdown structure, and work breakdown structure dictionary. So work breakdown structure is the the lowest level of your uh, work packages. So and uh, work breakdown structure dictionary is kind of um, uh, similar. Like you will have an ID and work breakdown structure and definition. So you, you can you will get a kind of matrix there. So taking work breakdown structure, work breakdown structure dictionary, and the scope statement, you will get your scope baseline. Now here also the project document gets updated as you create uh, multiple things, you, your documentations will be uh, more, more elaborated, so you will just update the documents. Now in monitoring and control, you have uh, two processes in scope management. So first one is the validate scope. So one of the things is uh, uh, to remember here, the validate scope is actually performed by the user who actually Who will actually accept the uh, uh, your product? So validate scope uh, will have uh, input of project management plan, requirement documentations, requirement traceability matrix, verified deliverables, work performance data. So uh, requirement documentation. Uh, so your requirement traceability matrix will give the customer or the user end user 
that uh, the what are the things they need to compare with your final uh, verified deliverable so verified deliverable is one of the deliverables that is uh, comes under the control sco um, control uh, qu uh, quality uh, where your deliverables are verified that the, it, it meets the quality and then it comes here in the verified uh, invalidated scope and customer checks with the requirement traceability matrix, the requirement documentation that it meets their expectations or not. If it meets, uh, and work performance data will also definitely come in as an input because you will uh, uh, actually inspect those, uh, uh, means a customer will inspect those uh, elements there. And uh, group decision making is another uh, technique. So uh, they will decide in, in a group that what what is uh, accepted, what is not accepted, or what change requires they need to do. So finally, you will get uh, accepted deliverables. So uh, uh, if the customer, it can be accepted or rejected. So uh, accepted deliverables, we just, uh, uh, when, when the customer accept everything is fine as per the plan, so it will be accepted deliverables. Then they might uh, propose some change request so that uh, some of the changes in the deliverable, so they will propose a change request. So remember, this change request will directly go to the your integrated change control for approvals. Now, uh, project documentations, uh, get, project document get updated, then the work performance informations also get as output because we are comparing uh, uh, the work performance data here. So with a benchmark, so work performance information is one of the output here. Now the control scope, we have a project management plan as input, requirement documentations input, requirement traceability matrix, organization process asset, and work performance data. So now this validate scope and control scope will be different because uh, you know, validate scope actually you are giving the, uh, the verified deliverable to the customer to, uh, uh, to their uh, inspections. But in control scope, you are continuously monitoring your uh, uh, scope that the if your project is within scope or the scope creep is happening scope creep is like is just going out of control of the scope and you just keep on adding some different things on your project so the control scope actually uh, monitors if the scope creep is happening or uh, uh, or if the project is uh, exactly following the scope plan scope statement or not so requirement traceability matrix, organization process asset, these are the inputs to uh, just uh, compare your uh, work performance data. So now the variance analysis with uh, uh, for this, that work performance data and your uh, traceability matrix, or so whatever you have, the requirement uh, matrix, that will, by def uh, variance analysis, you will get the output. So output here is a change request. So uh, you know that, that uh, there might not be uh, uh, everything is possible as per the plan. So there will be some change request or it might be that project is not going as per the plan. So there might be a change request to do it uh, differently. So project management plan will get updated, project documentations will get updated, organization process asset will updated because all these uh, places it, it will touch like um, project management plan might update because your scope uh, uh, statement, if it gets changed, then your scope baseline actually will get changed and your scope baseline is one of the uh, component of your project management plan. So project management plan also get updated. So organization process asset get updated because you uh, 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 just uh, documenting whatever you have learned or just uh, not going as per the plan, you will just keep on documenting those in the asset, organization process asset. And you finally get a work performance information. So work performance information you'll pretty much see in any control uh, uh, process group. So that will, as I said earlier, that is actually a comparison data of your uh, 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 actual work performance data and the planned effort. So that is it for the scope management plan. I will see you next in uh, time management. Thank you.